Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to create procedural slime using SOPS. As per usual, you can download the Houdini file on my Procygen website, and you can support my work on Patreon. So before we start from scratch, let's have a look at the setup. So we come up with some randomly placed objects, could be rocks or flying pickheads and scatter some points on those. The ray node will shoot points to the other side and we are going to connect these points by straight lines, which we make sag with a bit of vex. Next, we may want to add some drips using a similar approach and filter out intersecting curves. Now, just remove them. Then we are going to create point scale to define the uh, shape from one side to the other so it gets a little bit thinner in the middle. After a few steps of smoothing we are going to cut off the ends and uh, are then going to do one more smoothing to get the minimal surface area and then this should be the setup for a quick slime. Let's start in a new scene and come up with some random objects inside a geometry container. I'm just going to use a bunch of spheres this time and we are going to copy them to some random points. A quick approach could be just a line with some points that are being jittered. Make sure the jittering has a larger scale and maybe not too many points. I try to avoid intersections, but it's not terribly important. After that, we are going to use the mountain node, which is referring to the attribute noise now, to get in some more detail. Also, I think we should increase the resolution of the sphere a bit. So this would be our quick setup. And now we are going to scatter those points onto the surface. We don't necessarily need to relax them. And the total count can be replaced by a density scale. This is more procedural. I also would like to have point normals. So let's add some explicit normals to the surfaces and then also the scattered points should come up with their own point normals. Now let's use the ray node to shoot those points onto the geometry. And when you enable transform points, you should see it changing a bit. I do not need to show the guide geometry. I don't need to transform points. I'm just interested in the point intersection distance. And I would like to know the point group that actually hits something. Also, let's lift up the points a bit from the surface so they have a chance of reaching the other side. <clears throat> now, let's remove the points that didn't hit anything, so we blast the non-selected ray hit group and now just write a simple VEX script to make use of the distance attribute. So the position would be V at P plus the normalized V at N normal multiplied by f at dist, which is the distance. And then we are going to add a point at that position in our current geometry stream. And you now see that each point got a new one, which we can then connect into a polyline using the current point and the newly created one. So this should be connections between the surfaces. I'd like to add some sagginess, so 
we will resample those straight curves by, let's say, a length of 0.05, depending on the size of your scenario. By the way, if you don't want to have endlessly long connections, there's also a way to reduce the or to limit the max distance. So you could exclude, let's say, this very long connection. I kind of like it, but just in case, here it is. Now, after the line wrangle, we are going to create a new one after the resample, which is called gravity or sagginess. And it will look up the relative curve length. So that would be the vertex curve parameterization, zero i at vtx num. So it's using the underlying vertex number. And in case you need a visualization of that, let's just set the color to U, 1.0 minus U, and the blue component can be left to zero. So you see this is basically fading from zero to one from beginning to the end. And we can use this for a quick mask, which is multiplying U by its complement multiplied by 4.0. Let's just subtract this from Y. So this will be quite extreme, but you see now we get something that looks pretty close to what gravity would do to a rope. And we would like to have a slider to control the scale of that effect. Channel float scale. And now we can either multiply it, our mask by that, or we can also remove the multiply it by 4.0, which would just set it to one. So now the scale effect is a bit weaker. What it does not do is, as you can see here in that very tight area, is it's not really respecting the, the length. So we should also multiply that in. Um, let's get a sense of the, the length of the curve, mm -hmm. which is to be obtained by prim intrinsic, and it's called measured parameter of that current primitive. If you haven't seen this yet, you can just click on the primitives and get a list of all intrinsic attributes that are available using the prim intrinsic X function. Now in order to use this, I will just multiply A by A. And now the short ones wouldn't be respected as much, while the long connections are still hanging through quite a bit. I will arbitrarily bring this into some collisions, so the curves are intersecting with the geometry to filter those out. So we can use the group node, which has a way of detecting intersections for points that um, collide. We can refer to a, the second input, which is a bounding object. And the bounding object would, of course, be our rocks. So now you should see some selected points that are stuck inside the geometry. And in order to uh, filter out the entire curves, we are going to use another attribute wrangle, which I call remove intersect. And then we are going to simply say, as soon as you are part of that collision group, we are going to remove the entire primitive zero I at prim num and hit one to remove it fully. So now the colliding parts should be gone. In order to add some drips, you can also scatter some more points for the drips. 
again, I will re remove the relaxation and disable the total count. I want a really low density scale. It could be even less than one. And in order to um, turn these into lines, we can one more time define a new position, which is a bit lower, um, <clears throat> using maybe a random offset based on the current point number. You can add an additional seed value, and I think we should fit the offset from 0 to 1 to, let's say, 0.5 to 1.0. And then we can simply subtract that from the vertical position. Now, in order to get new points based off this, we would set V at P minus and then a vector that includes the offset like so. Same approach as before, we are creating a new point on that position and then connect it to a polyline. So I at PT num and the new point would be connected. Now you'll have a scenario where also these drips are uh, colliding. So what we could do is we simply refer to the gravity, create our drip lines and merge them before we feed them in into our collision detection and remove these curves. This is not going to work perfectly, um, either because we haven't resampled those drip lines, or there's also a scenario where these drip lines will stick to a curve that has been removed. So beware of some bugs here. Now the more interesting part is how to um, convert this uh, setup into a actual uh, surface with slime. And for this, I would use uh, the p-scale attribute. So the next triangle should be called point underscore scale. And here we can just define again the U, which is uh, vertex curve parameterization. It's basically the same as if you were uh, using the curve U attribute from the resample node. And then we define the radius, which uh, again by U multiplied by 1.0 minus U, and we multiply it by 4.0 to make it fit into 0 to 1 again. And this is exactly what we are going to remap from 0 to 1. And I will word it so it will go from 1.0 down to 0.5. So that way, the middle parts that are sagging or are just in between beginning and end will be 0.5, and the endpoints have the full scale. So let's export this as p scale. And now we can convert this to a VDB from particles node, which is taking in the point scale automatically. So let's just do some adjustments here. Um, depending on the size of your setup, um, I'd use a point radius scale of 0 0.15 and give the voxel field a resolution of 0.02. Um, you can still see some stepping due to uh, the way this has been resampled, so feel free to increase this a bit. It, it shouldn't change the world, so let's just say 0.02 for each of those resample nodes. 
Now the next steps are basically about smoothing. So you can use a VDB smooth SDF node for that. And there are different options. I've chosen Laplacian flow, which doesn't do much by standard, but you could set it to 20 iterations and it would blur the voxel fields quite a bit. Now, um, other than that, we can uh, convert this back to polygons using the convert VDB node, which gives us the chance to remesh this because the, if you look closely, you'll see that the topology is not ideal for blurring it more and the remesh node also comes in with an option to smooth the results a bit and set the edge lengths to maybe 0 0.03. <clears throat> so it should get even smoother. The next step we're going to take is going to clip off the end bits. So the fastest way is the Boolean subtract node. So again, we refer to our input. And now you see that the ends are clipped off. Just make sure to tell them that we're treating the first input as a surface. Now, the next step would be simply to smooth the remaining geometry. So there's a smooth node which uh, can be turned on quite drastically. It will make these slime bits incredibly thin, which I think looks quite realistic. And now we can do some additional steps. We could look into um, either removing uh, groups or attributes that are not necessary anymore and then merge the result with the input and for a nice effect, maybe colorize the slime. All right, thank you for watching. And uh, the most important nodes, in my opinion, are the gravity node. Again, using the vertex curve parameterization and a formula to make it sag then quite simply an offset in the drip line and maybe this formula being used again to define the point scale. Thank you for watching.